All right, Kim, look at me. I'm surfing the old inbox today, looking for some good myths. Oh, we got a couple good ones here. Oh, oh, wait a minute. There's a good one. Ooh. There's a question about using basic pH with either hybrid columns or hybridized columns. Boy, that sounds like a fine difference, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, this should be a good one to kind of investigate here. Mm -hmm. I think as we know, using alkaline mobile phase or ones that are higher pH are really advantageous for mm -hmm. methods development. Yep. But as I think we know on a silica-based column, you would just probably ruin that column. So you need a hybrid or some sort of hybridized stationary phase. Right, I mean, it's gonna be important for a column to be stable at basic pH, because if you if it's not, then you're just dissolving that base particle and you're adding that to your sample and it's polluting your detector, it's causing all kinds of problems. And <laughs> That's a bad day, Kim. That's, That's a very a bad, bad day. day. So yeah. let's take a look. We'll take a look at a fully hybrid and a hybridized stationary phase, maybe one of the modern solid core ones that we see out there. Okay. And we'll just compare their results uh, or their peak shape. We'll look at some attributes like efficiency under those conditions. Yep. And see how they look. All right, so we could run them at basic pH for a period of time and then measure the overall retentivity of an analyte and see how that retention changes over time, right? Yeah, retention or efficiency. I think that would be a good okay. play. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Jonathan. So I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. Yeah, me too, Kim. I mean, we had to make up some special mobile phase to mm -hmm. run these experiments. The ammonium bicarbonate, pH 10.5, mm -hmm. just for the favorite kill test of ours. I know, my favorite column kill test. Yeah. We run them at 60 degrees C. Let's see how long they last. Exactly. Should we look at the data? Let's do it. All right. All right, Kim. So I was able to get a couple columns, one being a fully homogeneous hybrid, our BEH material. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I compared that against a modern hybridized solid core material, which is a solid silica solid core material surrounded by a hybridized kind of coating. Oh, okay. Yeah, so let's take a look, let's take a look at the results of some of those columns. All right, let's see what this shows. So we subjected these columns to my favorite column kill test. We don't want this experiment to go on forever, so we kind of accelerated the conditions a little bit. We ran these in 10 millimolar ammonium bicarbonate, pH 10.5 at 60 degrees C. And when we did that, what we really see is that the overall pH stability with our compound we use as a marker, the amitriptyline, actually stayed pretty well for the hybrid columns, but for the hybridized columns, which happened to be a solid core, they actually, it degraded pretty quickly. And we can see that when we look at the peak shape for the amitriptyline. You can see what starts out as a pretty nice Gaussian peak actually starts to degrade pretty quickly into a point where it would be very hard to, to actually get a good measurement out of that peak. Yeah, Kim, I can see that. Look at that. That peak looks terrible at the end. It does. So what I want to do then, Kim, is let's, let's unpack some of these columns and we'll look at the base particles themselves under a scanning electron microscope. Oh yeah, let's do that. Then we can see what happened. All right, Kim. So I went down and I bugged the analytical lab. <laughs> like they love it when I'm down there. And I had them run a couple SEM images of the fully porous, uh, fully hybridized or hybrid material versus the hybridized solid core material. And the images are pretty impressive. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, as you can see, when you look at that hybridized solid core material, since that's just a silica based material surrounded by a hybridized shell, once that alkaline mobile phase penetrates through to that silica solid core, it actually dissolves it right out. No wonder we lost the peak shape. Exactly, and you can see this looks like starburst. And then to the right, you got what, googly eyes? I don't know what you call that <laughs> one. But for the fully hybrid uh, BEH material, the base particle is really unaffected because that's a fully homogeneous hybridized network. So we know why the solid core didn't work. But what about these fully hybrid columns? What makes them so stable? Why do they work? Yeah, Kim, I mean, if you look at it, it's fundamentally how the particles are built. So when you look at a fully hybrid material, the ethylene structure is actually interlaced throughout the whole particle substrate and it's homogeneous in nature. If you look at the hybridized solid core material, that's really just a silica based particle, silica solid core, surrounded kind of by like a superficially kind of like hybridized layer almost like a candy coating on an apple. <laughs> <laughs> and once you bite through or get through that candy coat, the rest of the apple just kind of erodes away. 
So this column actually has these ethylene bridges throughout the whole lattice work of the actual particle, and that's what makes it a true hybrid, right? That's right, that's right, and that's what gives us it's really its stability and its rigidity. Mm. All right, Jonathan, so it's pretty clear that the hybridized particle columns aren't as stable or as efficient as the fully hybrid columns. Yeah, Kim, that's pretty obvious. This myth is, is completely busted as far as alkaline pH stability. Those hybridized materials, sure, they're better than probably pure silica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, silica you can't use at all, right? Exactly. But for overall longevity, for methods development, you probably want a fully hybrid homogeneous particle substrate that can handle that alkaline mobile phase. All right, Kim, since you usually get back to the customer, I'll get back to this customer. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll let them know that, you know, again, if they're running at high pH, they should probably be using a completely uh, homogeneous hybrid material to do their methods development. Definitely not silica. Definitely not silica. Okay. Mm -mm. okay. If you'd like your question to be answered on a future episode, please feel free to email us at trustyourscience at waters.com. Mm -hmm.